Good evening and welcome to the model Principles and Non-Binding Norms on Outer Space. My name is Victoria Valdivia. I'm political scientist and magister in international studies. I'm current mentor into a Space for Women initiative of the Office of United Nations on Outer Space Affairs. And also as volunteer, I am Program and Partners Manager at World Space Week Association. I want to thank you for be attending this course that is the first free online course on space policy and law. And this, is, this initiative is very important in order to create capabilities in space, law and policy. And also, as we can see in the coming presentation, this kind of initiative contributes to the stress of non-binding norms on outer space activities. So, as content, we will see what are the principles of outer space activities, what are the non-binding norms on outer space activities and the role of symposium forums and conference as fund for non-binding norms. In first term, we can define a principle as a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a shine of reason. This definition involves the component of an agreement taken for some actors, in this case for some international actors, subject of international law. In the search of common understanding for regulated international activities on outer space, states agree a kind of principles related to outer space related with their nature, their impact on human life on Earth, and about the domain of celestial bodies as key component of outer space environment. It means that the definition of principles related of outer space activities involves the common knowledge about what is outer space as a dimension, as an environment, and also about the technological dimension of the activities conducted on outer space. The principles related to outer space activities are involved with the evolution of the technology and in this way with the capabilities of mankind in order to do some kinds of activities into this dimension and with the benefit of outer space. It means that the principles of space activities are not statics and as the technology they must evolve in order to reflect the reality. In 1963, the General Assembly of United Nations adopted the legal principles governing the activities of a state in the exploration and use of outer space. This declaration was seated in basis of three key components, the recognition of the common interest of all mankind in the progress of the exploration and use of outer space for peaceful uses, the belief that the exploration and use of outer space should be carried on for the betterment of mankind and for the benefit in exploration and use of outer space and in the benefit in a equality basis. It means irrespective for the degree of economic or scientific development and in the desire to contribute to international cooperation because this international cooperation will contribute to the development of mutual understanding and the strengthening of friendly relations between nations and peoples, having impact on a decrease of tension during the Cold War 
and for that, contributing with the goals of the United Nations as well. This declaration set the basis for the formulation of principles related to outer space activities and results in the basis for future international treaties. This declaration has four pillars. First, the recognition of outer space as a global common. It means that their benefit and uses shall be carried on for the benefit and in the interest of all mankind in basis of equality and in accordance with international law. Second, the recognition that outer space environment elements and celestial body as well are not subject for national appropriation by claim of sovereignty by means of use or occupation or by other means. Third, the recognition of international liability of a state conducted outer space activity by means of registration. And fourth, the recognition of astronauts as mankind and boys and the need of protection them no matter other conditions. These four pillars are so important because they allow the involve of international instruments that aims to regulate the potential conflict into outer space dimension or the conflict that can be observed for the conducted of some kinds of operation that can create some international interference as product of uh, accident during the outer space operation or related with the capability of a theater state on use the national operation of any state in order to uh, increase tensions into international system. In 1982, the General Assembly adopted the principles, principles governing the use by a state of artificial earth satellites for international direct television broadcasting. According with the development of technologies, the state considered that the advances on experiment about direct TV broadcasting by satellite will be a commercial activity in the future and it will impact international relations and will have even a positive impact in terms of human development. According with this idea, this declaration established a set of principles for direct TV broadcasting satellites in order to contribute to strengthening the international cooperation in this field, keeping in mind that the service of this kind of activities will have an impact on the access to information, also in political, scientific, educational and economical field into international system. Because by first time in the human history, people could access to service related to television that comes from a satellite, compromising their capability to be interconnected and to access to the information. This declaration is founded into the following pillars. The recognition of non-intervention principle in the conduct of the operation of direct TV broadcasting satellites as extended element of sovereignty of states. By first time, a state recognizes that a satellite as an outer space platform could involve some elements of sovereignty of any state. And in this idea, they are protected in case of an interference coming from a third state. 
Second, the promotion of a free dissemination and mutual exchange of information and knowledge in cultural and scientific fields, particularly in developing countries in order to improve the life of people. With this pillar, this declaration aims to improve the capability of developing country in order to access to new kinds of communication and dissemination of knowledge. For example, during this, this time in developing countries, some educational programs were conducted by television service. In the particular case of Chile, in the 80s, uh, was started a educational program by uh, TV in order to reach to isolate communi communities and give to them some uh, tools in order to improve their economic activities. One uh, famous program related to this activity was Teleduca and Teleduca aims to improve the level related with cultural field and knowledge field so people can conduct new, uh, uh, new economic activities. The other important pillar in this, uh, the, in this uh, document is the, that the activities of this kind of satellite must be carried out in a manner compatible with the development of mutual understanding in the interest of maintaining international peace and security. It means that the operation for satellite uh, related with direct television broadcasting service must Keep in mind that it's not allowed to, to employ this kind of service or agreements related with the service in order to make propaganda or in order to, to be the, the principal cause for uh, internal conflict in the recipient country. Other pillar is related about the protection of copyrights. By first time in outer space activity history, the member states of the United Nations take care about the copyrights of the contents that are transmitted by the satellite service. And finally, the quality of any state for conduce these kinds of activities. These pillars remind that any state has the right to conduct a satellite operation related to international direct television broadcasting. So it's not relating with the availability of any state to make it. If a state can make their own operation, they will be allowed by, by international community. In 1986, the General Assembly adopted the principles relating to remote sensing of the Earth from outer space. This is a very, very important declaration because the development of technology to conduct remote sensing of the Earth from outer space guided to the states to establishment a set of principles in order to regulate this kind of of activity in order to strengthen the international cooperation in this field because this activity will impact the life of mankind on earth and can contribute to a better understanding of the environment, improving life of communities and impacting into the opportunities of developing countries in order to reach human development. This declaration is very important because it has seated by the first time the following concepts. Remote sensing. It means the sensing of the Earth's surface from space, making use of the properties of electromagnetic waves emitted, reflected, 
or refracted by the sensitive objects. For the purpose of improving natural resource management, land uses, and the protection of the environment. Primary data. Raw data that are acquired by remote senses borne by a space object and that are transmitted or delivered to the ground from space by telemetry in the form of electromagnetic signals, photographic films, magnetic tape, or many other means. Processed data. Product resulting from the processing of the primary data needed to make such data usable. So, in order to, to transform the data into useful information. Analysis information. Information resulting from the interpretation of processed data. Inputs of data and knowledge from other sources. And remote sensing activities that are the operation of remote sensing space systems, primary data collection and storage stations, and activities in processing, interpreting, and disseminating the processed data. Those terms are the principal milestone in modern cooperation agreements related to management of risk of disasters and other activities where remote sensing of Earth are relevant. This document also establishes the following pillars. Remote sensing activities must be conducted under the principles of international law and with peaceful purpose. The remote sense activities must be conducted under the principle of freedom on outer space. It means that no one cannot deny the transit of a satellite, but at the same time, the remote sense activities must be conducted under a full respect of sovereignty of a state over their natural resources and their territorial factors. The remote sect activities must conduct under the principle of international cooperation and collaboration, promoting the access to data and processed data under the terms of agreement between states. Remote sensing shall promote the protection of the Earth's natural environment. An access to data and analysis of a sensitive state must be available under non-discriminatory principle and unreasonable cost. In 1992, the General Assembly adopted the principle relevant to the use of nuclear source in outer space. The use of nuclear power to conduct some activities on outer space demonstrates the need to regulate it in order to assure the security on outer space operation and in order to prevent deployment of nuclear power on outer space. This document is relevant to international community because under these principles a state compromise them to conduct outer space activities in peaceful uses because the potential uses of nuclear power sources into outer space can create or, or can impact into the developing of a future conflict. Also, the occurrence of these kinds of activities in outer space can compromise the safety of people on Earth because outer space contains the Earth. For that reason, the state recognized that the use of nuclear space power sources in outer space should be based on a thorough safety assessment, including probabilistic risk analysis, with particular emphasis on reducing the risk of accidental exposure of the public to harmful radiation or radioactive material. 
this is the first document that has established the need to future revision of the principles in order to accurate it to new de developments. So, this document make relevant the need to review the, the principles cited about some space activities because as technology evolves, the regulatory framework of a space activity must be reviewed in the future. The principles that are recognized in this document are the application of international law. The activities involving the use of nuclear powers are under the scope of international law on the charter of the United Nations. Use of terms. Recognizing the terms of launching state and state of launching as different kind of actors with international liability. By the first time, the international community recognizes also the relation that could emerge between a launching state and a law and a state of launching. It means between the actor who launched the uh, outer space vehicle and the state that act in order to facilitate their installation or their geographical position in order to make possible the launching of this vehicle. Of course, as this is a relation between state actors, there will be always a cooperation or collaboration relationship between the state actors. The other principle is related with the guidelines and criteria for safe use. The nuclear power plant must be used only if it's not other option to conduct the space operation. If you have the ability to uh, conduct the space operation using other power source, you must take this last option and not the nuclear power source. In that case, this principle establishes restricted kinds of power sources depending the goal and characteristic of the mission. In that sense, it's very interesting to see that related with this, this document, the, the declaration different, may, uh, establishes a set of difference relating with the natural uh, nuclear power sources in, in outer space activities. For example, the, the document establishes a difference between nuclear reactors and establishes that nuclear reactors might be operated on interplanetary missions in subtle high orbits as defined in, in the paragraph 2. Uh, that uh, and, and it say that nuclear reactors shall use only highly enriched uranium 935 as well. The design shall take into account the radioactive decay and the fission and activation product. And the third part say that the nuclear reactor might be operated in low Earth orbits if they are stored in sufficiently high orbits after the operational part of their mission. Also, established that nuclear reactors shall not be made critical before they have reached their operating orbit or interplanetary trajectory. Related with radioisotope generators, uh, the declaration established that radioisotope isotope generation might be used for interplanetary mission and other mission leaving the gravity field of the Earth. They may also be used in Earth orbit if 
after the conclusion of the operational part of their mission, they are stored in a high orbit. In any case, ultimate disposal is necessary. Also say that this kind of generation shall be protected by the containment system that is designed and constructed to withstand the heat and aerodynamic forces of re-entry in the upper atmosphere under foreseeable orbital condition, including high elliptical or hyperbolic orbits where relevant. Upon impact, the containment system and the physical form of the isotope shall ensure that no radioactive material is scattered into the environment so that the impact area can be completely cleared of radioactivity by a recovery operation. This is very important because it is linked directly with human security on Earth, especially taking care that the most of re-entry area are located in geographical zones that correspond with developing countries is very important to have the, the knowledge that any kind of element that will re-entry will be not dangerous for population near to the re-entry place. This uh, declaration also establishes the responsibility principle that say that state conducted operations with nuclear power source are responsible for their national activities. All kinds of uh, possible accidents that could happen inside the state conducted this kind of activities make responsible the the state in face of international community. Also uh, established that el, in, in case of re-entry, any state launching a space object with nuclear power source on board shall in a timely fashion inform a state concerning in the event this space object is malfunctioning with a risk of re-entry of radioactive materials on Earth. Also, the declaration establishes that a state must respond to requests for future information or consultation sought by other states, especially focused in those states that uh, can require some kind of information relating to the dangers of a re-entry operation that could involve uh, security issues for the por national population or national territories. Assistance of states. In case of re-entry, all states possessing the space monitoring and tracking facilities in the spirit of international cooperation shall communicate the relevant information that they may have available on the malfunctioning space object with a nuclear power source on board. This with the purpose to, to facilitate dissemination of information for those states that could observe a high risk related with the re-entry of this space object with nuclear power source on board. Liability and compensations. A state from whose territories or facility a space object is launched shall be international liable for damage caused by such space objects or their component parts. This Fully applies to the case of such a space object carrying a nuclear power source on board. Whenever two or more states jointly launch such a space object, they shall be jointly and severally liable for any damage caused. About the settlement of disputes, disputes must be resolved under the principle of peaceful settlements of disputes 
of the Charter of United Nations. And finally, the review and revisions. The principles must be reviewed after two years after the adoption of the document. In 1996, the General Assembly adopted the Declaration on International Cooperation in the Exploration and Use of Outdoor Space for the Benefit and in the, and in the Interest of All States, taking into particular account the needs of developing countries. This document put in relevance the need of developing countries to access to benefits of outdoor space activities. And this document uh, have the particularity to make visible that no matter the general principles of outdoor space activities, sometimes the joint ventures between a space nation and a developing country will not conduct it under uh, fair terms. For that, and by first time bearing in mind the recommendation of the second United Nations Conference on the Exploration and Peaceful Use of Outer Space and other international conference, the General Assembly recognizes it the growing scope and significance of international cooperation among states and between states and international organizations in the exploration and uses of outer space for, purpose, for, for peaceful purposes. Also, the General Assembly recognizes it to be combined of the necessity and the significance of future strengthening international cooperation in order to reach a broad and efficient collaboration in this field for the mutual benefit and in, in the interest of all parties involved. So, the adoption of this declaration established by first time the role of international conventions and conference as fund for the development of outer space principles. Also, this document established the freedom of, a, of the states to determine all aspects of their participation in international cooperation in the exploration and use of outer space on an equitable and mutually acceptable basis. This is related with the capability of particularly developing countries to access to contractual terms in such cooperative ventures should be fair and reasonable and they should be in full compliance with the legitimate rights and interests of the parties concerned as, for example, with intellectual property rights. This is necessary because you need to regulate the way in which a state enters into collaboration relationships in order to prevent the emergence of soft power mechanisms that will impact in the capability of developing countries to reach their own goals by outer space activities or use the benefits from outer space activities for their own purposes. Also, the declarations say that all states, particularly those with relevant space capabilities and with programs for the exploration and use of outer space, should contribute to promoting and forcing international cooperation on an equitable and mutually acceptable basis. In this context, particular attention should be given to the benefit for and the interest of developed countries and countries with incipient space program, stemming from the such international cooperation conducted with countries with more advanced space capabilities. Also, 
the document established a regulatory frame related to fair contracts and fair terms of cooperation in joint ventures. This is relevant because allow the generation of trade in basis of common interest and not just under soft power mechanisms that can mine the principle of legal, legal equality between states that are recognized by the Charter of United Nations. This document made mention to the availability of non-state actors to enter into cooperation relations with the space nation in order to create capabilities in developing countries. This was the first scene for new space actor. In this, in this way, the, the principle that we are talking about establishes that international cooperation, while taking into particular account the needs of developing countries, shall aim inter alia at the following goals, considering their need for technical assistance and rational and efficient allocation of financial and technical resources, keeping in mind that the first difficult that face a developing country when they want to, to conduce some space operation are relating to the access to funds and financial mechanisms to make it possible. So they need to take care about the way that they are using the the funds in order to to reach the goals and to uh, the, uh, to observe a more secure environment for the inversion. So, in this sense, the principles establish that the ways to make this is, this possible is first promoting the development of space science and technologies and of its application because the uh, developing countries need to use the space benefits in order to improve some specific areas into their national uh, issues. For example, access to remote sense data in order to uh, manage risk disasters. Then first fostering the development of relevant and appropriate space capabilities in interest state. It means that it's not only the need of uses of space data, it's also necessary to create capability in order that this new space nation in the near future can conduct their own space operation and then facilitating the exchange of expertise and technology among states on a mutually acceptable basis. It means that if you, as a state, if you have more knowledge, more technology, and more infrastructure related to space activities, you can contribute to the development of other space nations, especially developing countries, under the transference of knowledge, under the technological assistance, but keeping in mind that it's not a long-term relation between a customer and a client. You always must aim to create a space capabilities with your partner and under the jurisdiction of your partner. So, this uh, declaration also recognizes that as space developing countries are incipient into outer space activities, it's usual that they don't count with uh, some organization related to a space as and a space agency. So the the declaration may uh, make mention that this international collaboration could be conducted under other 
kind of organization. Particularly, the document says that international cooperation should be conducted in the modes that are considered most effective and appropriate by the countries concerned. It's, it means that it's not necessary to count with a space agency in order to enter into cooperation and collaboration agreement with an space nation because you can make it through or including inter alia governmental and non-governmental commercial and non-commercial global multilateral regional or bilateral and international cooperation among countries in all levels of development it allows the entry to new space actor in order to create capabilities for example under this principle it's acceptable that one space nation can contribute and collaborate with a developing country using a non-governmental entity in order to transfer knowledge uh, to make technical assistance to to give data or to uh, design other ways in order to create space capabilities into uh, the developing countries. Because, as I told you, developing countries uh, not always comes with a um, dedicated uh, governmental organization dedicated to outer space activities. And for that, is very important to define the levels that will in enter into agreements into cooperation agreements in order to produce the more effective impact on the developing country well as you can see, the principles of outer space activities are related with a set of common or, or shared through in which the states compromises their will in order to to be able to implement international treaties but in an appropriate way it means that the formulation of principles of outer space are very important in order to reach the goals and to keep the spirit that inspired the international treaties and through the formulation of this kind of principles you can produce the change into the international system in order to reach the the main goals of international organization regulating outer space activities in this case the united nation through their a United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs and the Committee for Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COPUOS. Now we will talk about non binding norms of outer space. The non binding norms of outer space, in this case, are part of the soft law. They can be or not legal document and in this sense can compromise in legal terms the will of an international actor such the state. It's very interesting this kind of international instruments because the non-binding norms are usually product of international conventions and evolve the academic knowledge that make visible the emergency of new international uses, issues, issues, issues of international relations that are not fully regulated for international treaties. 
Also, the non-binding norms help to strengthen some aspects of international treaties that need to be updated in order to be more accurate to the emergency of new reality and paradigm of change. In this mean, as the codification of international space law is subject to the evolve of technologies, the non-binding norms are necessary in order to keep good levels of governance of outer space activities at the international level and improve the security of the space operations. The formulation of non-binding norms repose into the role of international actors and are usually vinculated to multilateral forums. Uh, I want to share with you two examples of non-binding norms of outer space. The first of them are the guidelines on long-term sustainability of outer space activities. This set of guidelines aims to stress the needs of conduct sustainable activities into outer space in order to prevent the collapse of LEO and security risk on space operation as a result of increment of a space device. These guidelines are not an international treaty, but they found their spirits into the principle of use of outer space as a global common and to keep the benefits from outer space activities for coming generations. So, if you want to assure that your kids or your grandkids will be able to access to space benefits, you must keep sustainable activities on outer space because the environment of our of outer space can be collapsed by a space rise as a result of not controlled human space operations or space activities. Also, it opens a new debate about the uses of uh, celestial resources. Or what can happen us if someone have an accident related with nuclear power sources in outer space. The other example of non-binding norms of outer space is a Space 23 Agenda. This is a compendium of non-binding norms that aims to endorse the space activities to the reach of goals of Sustainable Development Goals 23 Agenda improving international cooperation and gender aspect of space activities in order to improve life and equality aspect of space development. This set or oh, this companion of non-binding norms if are not a set of legal instrument or vinculated legal instrument between the states are very relevant to to make visible the debate about how we can implement outer space treaties and principles if we don't adopt public policies related with outer space activities. For that reason, the uh, Space 23 Agenda aims to, to set some key points in order to improve the way in which a state are conducting their outer space activities. One of them, for example, is women in outer space activities. Because no matter how developed is a country into their outer space activities, there is still a great difference between being a man or a woman 
when you are working for outer space. And for that reason, under the direction of the United Nations, the international community aims to reduce the inequality of gender into outer space activities. And for that, they developed a set of initiatives, a set of conversations, forums, panels, etc., in order to, to raise the awareness about the relevance of gender equality in outer space activities. As any international instrument, the non-binding norms depends of the international acceptation of the international actors. It involves the negotiation and adaptation process in order to count in basis on goodwill with the major support, support as possible. For that reason, the non-binding norms must be observed by the member states. This kind of norms are in constant development and for that it's important to reach the major number of actors involved in their discussion and formulation. And in this way, it's, it's very important to stress the relevance of of international conferencing or symposiums in order to, to give the kickoff of the discussion of new non-binding norms. Because the formulation of a non-binding norms usually starts in an international conference when you can listen and talk with other stakeholders in order to improve the way in which we are conducting our national space activities. And more of that, it's very important to be able to discuss with partners, with colleagues, with other stakeholders, how we can improve the future on humankind on outer space activities in order to have a full accomplishment of the goals that are established for outer space activities under the principles that we as member state have recognized into the international system that we have declared into international instrument as international treaties. Finally, to reflect, I want uh, to tell you that this presentation will make in basis of the compendium of UNOSA on space law. So as final activity, I recommend you the lecture of this compendium and the reflection about the level of accomplishment in your national case of the set of principles and non-binding norms of international system on outer space activities. Well, as you can see in the slide, uh, there is a link so you can access to this compendium um, and, and have a more comprehensive lecture about uh, this very interesting part of the international space and policy uh, system. And in order to this, uh, share your comments or observation or why not your own reflection about the relevance of this kind of instrument for the peaceful uses of outer space and to design the future role of humankind in outer space activities. Thank you so much for your attention and thank you so much for being in this great challenge all together to be strong and for the state at your home.